Hello, and welcome to Plant 3D with the Experts. My name is Quentin Contreras, and I'm a Technical Support Specialist with Autodesk. Today's topic we'll be talking about is the P&ID portion of Plant 3D. AutoCAD Plant 3D has the ability to create piping and instrumentation diagrams with part of the Plant 3D program. These piping and, and instrumentation diagrams are typically known as PNIDs. So typically when a project is created, there's a section specifically set aside for PNID drawings and the project that you might be creating. As you're going through the creation of the project as well, you'll notice a couple of other things that are included with setting up the project. When you're going through the, the process of creating the project, you can choose from PNID sim symbology that is standard in most industries. Part of those symbols are included with depending on what type of project you're creating. So take, for example, if you're creating an imperial project, as you notice, as you're going through, it'll ask you to specify the PNID settings. In an imperial project, you'll have the option to either select the PIP standard or the ISA standard. If we go back, to choose a metric project using millimeters. Here in specifying the PNID settings, you have the option to either include PIP, ISO, DIN, or JIS-ISO. If we go back and make this an inches metric, we'll see that we have those same symbology standards as well to choose from. So these are part of the symbols that will be part of the project that you'll be able to create your PNID drawings with. So let's have a look at that in more detail and look at some of the drawings and go through some of the symbology that's also associated when you create this project. So looking at the example here, and you can use this sample project that comes with the program. So initially, you'll have a PNID drawing that might look something like this. So you'll have a basic layout that you're creating your PNID drawing and model space. And also, let's look at this other drawing. We have the same format here. So basically, when you choose your standard, you have the option to switch down here to workspaces depending on the standard that you've, cho that you've chosen. So this project was created using the PID PIP standard using Imperial. So this is the default that would come up for this particular project. So located, once you have located the standard, place this in your project, you'll have a tool palette here that has associated PNID symbols that come out of the box initially. Some of the symbology might not be included here with what you would normally see maybe in your symbology, because there are some PNID standards that, are, that vary from a little bit, but depending on what type of symbology is going to be used in your project. So that might be where you need to go into the project setup and be able to customize your PNID uh, symbols there. So let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail as well. So basically, <clears throat> you'll have a couple of components that you can use to create these PNID drawings. You'll have your pipelines, which you'll have your primary segment lines, and then you also have your instrument lines, depending on the instrumentation that's going to be used in your PNIG drawings here. So you have several options to choose from, and like I said previously, you also have the ability to go in and customize and add your own as well, and then add them to the palette here. You also have a various uh, vowels that you can choose from as well, and then also your standard fittings that would be associated with the PNID drawing. You have equipment that's also pre-drawn symbology here that you can use. We'll look at the instruments as well. So there's different instruments that can be associated with parts of your equipment, parts of your line, and so forth that can be included. And then looking at the non-engineering items, you have miscellaneous symbols that are that are used as well. And then of course your off-page connectors that are going to be connecting lines from PNID drawing to PNID drawing to show connectivity between, between drawings. So that's the symbology that you can use. 
but let's look, let's look at the drawings and see actually how the functionality of this actually works. So <clears throat> one of the unique features is with PNID, just like Plant 3D, is that all the components here that you're using are smart objects. So that means I can add information to these objects as I'm putting them in. So let's take, it one of the, take a look at one of these valves, for example. So if we look at the valve, and we go and actually look at the properties for this valve, you'll see here that in the properties of the valve, there are various fields of properties that you can go in and add additional information for. These are just some of the fields that normally come associated with the symbology that you're going to be using out of the box. However, in the project setup, you can go in and you can add more properties here for more specific needs that you might have to extract data for that might be included in, in your reporting process or just being able to have the ability to input more information for the components that you're putting in your drawing. So you do have the ability to add more here than what you're normally seeing. So that's one feature of being able to use smart objects in the PNID drawings. And you can, you can also do that with not just only the valves, but let's say you know you want to add more information for your equipment as well. So we can look at the properties here for the equipment, and you can see there's even more properties for the equipment that you can add in here that might be associated typically with properties that you would see in a bill of material for equipment. But like I said, you can also add more as you're going along or if you have that need to where you need to add that additional information. So that's one of the features to have the smart objects to be able to do that. But what else makes them a smart object? So with some of the items that you could have here, let's say that I had this valve here that needed to be a flange valve. So normally, if this was an unintelligent drawing, I'd have to go in and physically add the flanges on this valve. However, there are some dynamic properties with associated symbols that have a little bit more flexibility on things you can do. So if I right click on this valve, I can go, oops, let me go ahead and select it first. I go ahead and select this valve and then right click on it. I have a couple of options here. I can add a tag, which means I could go in and change what the tag would be. So if this needed to be a different number that's associated here, I can go in. And depending on how you set up the valve numbering or numbering for any item in, in the project, you can have it select the next number. So if I hit this button here, it's gonna tell me the next available number is 102. Then I can go ahead and assign that And that's the unique one. So I'm going to have to change that. So let's make this 900 and assign it. And there you can see that it has automatically changed that. And that's reflected in the valve as well. So let's look at something else here. So we change the tag on this. If I wanted to convert this to a control valve, I could easily do that here as well. Also, I can go in. And if this need, like I said earlier, if this needed to be flanged, I can specify that this is a flange valve and it would automatically go in here and update that for me. As you can see there, it changed it to a flange valve. The other thing that I can do is I can close, I can change the state of the valves as well. So if this was a normally closed valve, right now it's set to normally open, I can switch to so normally closed and the symbology that's associated with how this would appear for normally closed gets changed for the valve as well. So that's one of the great things about having smart PNID objects is that it allows you the ability to instantly make changes on the fly that would normally take you a little bit more time if you were doing this manually. So let's look at something else here. So one of the other new features is let's take a reducer, for example. So a reducer here, let's make sure this is tagged correctly. And that's four inch. So if I were going to change the size of this over here, let's say this one was going to be six inch, and I needed to make that change. I'm gonna go ahead and assign that. And as you can see, the reducer flips sides according to 
what the proper size in relationship to the reducer was. So that's an, another smart feature of part of the PNID process is it knows some of that intuitive intelligence that's going to have the ability to make those changes that you would normally have to manually do yourself. So where does all this data go? So now that we've inputted all this information here for items, let's say for you know instrumentation as well, where can we get, extract all this information? So extracting information is relatively pretty easy. So just like a plant 3D project, we can go into the data manager. So here in the data manager, I can specifically drill down to just my PNID project data. So here in my PNID project data, I have this divided out into different, um, different components as well. So you've got basically your, your equipment, your inline assets, assets, which includes hand valves and reducers, anything, anything else that would be associated with inline assets, instrumentation, your lines, nozzles, and then non-engineering items would be actuators and, and connectors for your um, page connectors as well. So <clears throat> that gives you the ability to go in here. So let's say we just wanted to look at our hand valves, specifically bullet down to our gate valves. We can see how this information has been in inputted for the valves that are placed in the drawing. So we got the associated spec that's associated with it. We've got the number that's associated, the tag, and then the drawing number where it's located as well. But let's say specifically that we needed to locate that valve in our drawing set to make it make sure that it is, you know, graphically placed correctly and we want to see it, you know, represented it correctly in the drawing. So that's a simple process as well. So if we've located a valve and we'll say that we're going to look up this HA183. So if we click over here on the left hand side with the magnifying glass. It's going to automatically take us to where that valve is located. So there's the HA183 and we can see the representation there. Let's do that one more time. So let's look at a check valve this time. So I'm going to go to HA179. And there's HA179 for that one. So like I said, that makes it very easy to, to double check and validate your PNID drawings by to give you the ability to zoom in and check exactly where those are located in your drawing. So another function that you would use with your PNID drawings is for reporting processes. So there's a couple of ways that Plant 3D PNID allows you to do this. So if we look here in our project reports, when we jump over to project reports, we get an automated list of items that we can extract information for reporting purposes on specific parts of the PNID drawings. So let's look at the valves again, since we were looking at those earlier. So if I click on the valve list, it's going to show me all the associated valves that are part of all the PNID drawings, and then I can export that information for reporting purposes. So simply all I have to do is click up here on the export button, or I can right click here on the list, and I can choose the export. Export is going to export all the valves that are associated in that PNID drawing out to an Excel file. From the Excel file, I'll be able to look at all the information in the Excel report. The other thing that you can do with those Excel files, if you have numerous amounts of information that you have fields that were not filled out when you initially placed the items in the P&ID drawings, in the Excel file, you can go back through and you can fill in those fields using Excel quicker than probably you would be able to go into each individual part and re-put the information that was missing for them. So then once you edit the Excel file, you'd have the ability to import that Excel file back into the project, and it'll go through all the drawings and input the information that might have been missing for some of these items initially when it was placed in the drawing. So once again, adding, giving the user the power to add information on the fly much quicker than you would manually. 
So one other thing that we can look at is when you go through the process of creating all your PNID drawings, you do want to go through and make sure that you have connectivity between each drawing as well. So as we're looking, we have our OPCs connectors here. With the OPCs, it's going to give you the ability to verify that an OPC is co connected to another drawing. So if you notice the symbol here, the green symbol with the two arrows in the middle of it, if it shows solid green with the two arrows, that means it's going back and forth between the drawings with properly connected between each drawing. If you're putting in an OPC and you don't have connection, you'll see another image here with the circle with the, with the line through it saying that there is no connectivity between this OPC and another drawing. So that gives you a visual representation that this still needs to be something that might need to be taken care of in your PNID drawings before you go into production with these drawings. Another way that you can check and make sure that all your validation process and everything has been filled out per your standards is to go through your uh, PNID checker or run validation. Run validation will go through the project and check for any uh, any information in your PNIDs that might not be complete. Another thing that you can do is you can go in and customize also how you want this information to be checked. So in your PNID, you can go through and check for size mismatches, spec mismatches, on terminating lines, unconnected components, flow direction, orphan annotations, and unresolved connectors. So these are some of the items that will go through the process as it's going through the validation process to make sure that you have everything checked correctly. If it doesn't come in, then it will also let you know and it'll zoom in on those specific areas where there might be problems with your PNID drawings of information that's either not complete or might be incorrect. So that's a general overview of the PNID portion of Plant 3D. This goes into some of the initial things that you can do to create drawings. However, I do suggest that you look at one of our other YouTube video series. That would be Plant 3D with the Experts, PNID Drawing Settings Part 2. Part 2 goes into more specifics on going into the project setup and what is available on the PNID side in the project setup. This will also tie into, as I talked about earlier, some of the customization that you would want to go in and change to add additional symbology or tagging or make it more unique to this, to whatever specific standards that you're trying to set up for your side on what your PNID standards might be. So look for it and check that one out as well, but also look forward to upcoming videos with more specific items that will go into customization of PNID and things you can do to make the, pro, uh, make the customization better to what you might need to fit your needs. Thank you for watching and thank you and have a great day.